Hello, 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 everybody. Uh, all right, yeah, today is, um, yeah, I, I guess it's Wednesday, October 24th. You probably know that. Um, but we are going to be talking about test-driven development uh, today. So before we get into that, I just want a quick shout out to testingjavascript.com because this is um, this is kind of why I'm doing all these test-focused live streams is to say, hey, there's a 40% discount right now. Um, that discount is going away uh, the evening of the 26th. We're going to add like a countdown or something like that. this so that you know exactly when that happens. Um, but I, I recommend that you... Ooh, that got a nice little bump effect there. Um, I didn't actually write the website, by the way. This is all Egghead's work. I just created the content. Um, and I thought I'd show you what the logged in website looks like too before we get into the TDD stuff. So um, when, you, when you're logged in, um, then you uh, can see all of these things. And so here we can view our fundamentals um, course. And uh, yeah, it's it's kind of cool. In this fundamentals, we build a testing framework and an assertion library. And at the very end, we swap out our um, own custom uh, assertion library and, and things with the built-in just one, um, which is kind of fun. Yeah, it's it's sweet. I think that you'll love it. Um, yeah, so then we've got our static analysis one, um, and then uh, mocking JavaScript. And all of these are, are relatively short, but um, people have said the first three modules by themselves have been mind-blowingly awesome. I've gotten really good feedback about those. But then we get into these big ones where it's like, whoa, look at all this stuff. Pretty cool. Um, so yeah, you check, the, uh, check this stuff out. Um, what we're going to be talking about is some of the test driven development of react form um, we have several lessons of all of this stuff so it's pretty cool but what we're going to be talking about is um, how uh, like situations where test driven development work well and situations where they don't also i need to talk to egghead about getting me upgraded to pro i don't know what's going on here anyway um so yeah, let's let's talk about this. When does test driven development work well? So actually, let's talk about um, test driven development itself. I, I think I have this on my blog already, maybe. No, I don't think so. So uh, if you go to my newsletter, <coughs> um, Yeah, now I can't remember which one of these it was, but there's a big image, and so I'll know exactly which one it is once I get there. The time I messed up. Oh, yes, actually, this is the one. Yeah, okay, I think I've got it on here. That cute little girl that I found on Unsplash. Um, isn't that adorable? Make Her eyes are so blue. Makes me think of my kids. Um, yeah, so this is, if you haven't read this already, I tell a story about this time that I had this um, module I wanted to build that was a pure module. And uh, so by that, I mean, you would just call into it, it would, uh, and then it would call back. Uh, so you give it some arguments, it calls back with, with some other arguments. It works really well. It's awesome um, uh, for test-driven development uh, because like you can write a bunch of test cases. I'll show you what that looks like in a little bit. But um, I, I made a mistake because um, I skipped a step in the test-driven development cycle. So uh, TDD, there's the red-green refactor cycle, um, where red is you, you write a test for the function or module, whatever, that you're going to create before it even exists or before the feature that you're adding exists. Um, by doing that, you're writing some um, a, a test for a use case that's not yet supported by the code that you're testing. And so automatically you should be getting a red. Um, if you get a green, then the code already supports the thing that you're working on. And uh, that's um, surprise, uh, happy surprise. But, or maybe your assertions aren't running, you should make sure that it's possible for those things to fail. In any case, you get that test failing and then you write all the code to make that test pass. Um, and when you, um, and you kind of try to force yourself to limit yourself into 
um, making uh, only the changes that are necessary for the test pass, even if those changes are like silly. So for example, if I was gonna write a sum function one and two, and I would expect that to return three, maybe this is my first test case, my sum function, or would say sum equals a and b, and I would just return three for that first test, because that's, that's all the code that I need to, uh, to implement for that first test to work. Now, when I write my next test, my, my next assertion, this is a, like an extremely contrived example. Like this is a, a function that I probably wouldn't test drive because it's like literally super easy to write. But um, yeah, just theoretical or, or um, at a philosophical level, just write the code that makes your test green. Don't write any more than that. So then we'll add another test that says sum of three and five is eight you know, make that assertion. And then we can say sum is a b and returns a plus b. And then our previous test continues to pass and the new test can, uh, will start passing. Uh, and that, that's everything for the sum function. But um, that's, that's the cycle here is um, you write a test that fails, you uh, write only the code that's necessary to make it pass, and then you refactor both your test and your um, code to make sure that it, it looks nice. Um, that refactor step is the step that I missed, um, and that was the the time I messed up was when I missed the refactor step. And now that module is like impossible to maintain or understand or any of that. Um, really, really annoying. So, um, yeah. So I I would strongly recommend that you um, you follow that refactor step, um, and you keep on working like that. So in the course, I um, I show you the um the steps that you go through uh, to make that work with a form. Um, and actually, let me just show you something really quick. I'm going to pop open a project that I was literally working on for PayPal yesterday. Um, it's called PP React. Um, and there's this uh, thing that I'm working on right now. Let me find it. Sorry. Uh, okay, here we go. Oh, that is not, here we go. Okay, here it is. Okay, <clears throat> so here is the thing. Um, basically, it takes a CSS file um, or a CSS string and turns it into um, an object following certain conventions and things like that. Um, and so for something like this, where it's, th this is just a pure function, takes a CSS string, returns back a, um, an object. There are no side effects. It, it, um, it does have some dependencies and things, uh, but I can just trust those dependencies are working. I don't need to, to verify that I'm calling those dependencies properly or whatever. We'll just call into those dependencies. See, this is why I'm like, yeah, unit testing, integration testing, there's kind of a fuzzy line there. Like, um, holis or, or, like from the purest standpoint, you'd be like, yeah, unit testing, you sever all connections to everything. And I don't, I don't, I don't know about that. I don't really care that much. I'm just mostly interested in being confident. But um, in any case, this is a pure function. It is calling into other modules, but um, those are also pure. So it's not doing any side effects. Because of that fact, um, this is very easy to test. What I actually, what I um, did before was I had um, I was like reading the CSS file, um, doing this file, uh, read file sync to get the CSS string. Um, and I was doing that and I was like, Hey, this is going to be kind of hard to test. So what I did was I extracted the, the core logic stuff, uh, into a pure function called generate JSON. And then, um, I could start writing it. And the benefit of that is I have this test now where I have just a bunch of cases. This is this is like bread and butter of test-driven development. This is so great when you can um, do something like this. Take some complex logic, put it in a little module, and then um, you can have a, a whole bunch of inputs and outputs. So I'm using just in case, and this is not something that I show in the course. Um, in retrospect, that's a mistake, and I'll add this um, to the course uh, later because this is really, really valuable. I use this all the time. Jest also has a built-in thing called test.each, um, which is interesting, but I I, um, I think that it's a little confusing. So I like just in case better. Um, but yeah, so I say, here are my cases. This is 
basically the title for the describe block. Um, and then here is um, the test. And I take these options and this object, um, each property in this object is one of those, op um, uh, just runs through these for each one of those op um, uh, test cases. So this is our simple case. Here's our CSS string. This is what it should output. Here's our, you know, we just have different titles for each of these different cases. Um, so yeah, what's really nice about this is I can look at this and I know exactly what um, this function is doing, even though the function itself is actually like, I mean, it's it's not really super complex, but it's 75 lines and it, we're, we're doing a bunch of object entries and reduce and a bunch of stuff. I could probably clean this up, but um, yeah, for the for the most part, this is like, oh, it's pretty, um, pretty straightforward, but um, it's made a lot simpler. Uh, because I, I extracted the piece that was doing side effects and stuck the um, the pure stuff in its own little module. Uh, and then I was able to write these really nice, simple test cases. And I've got more to do. Uh, this is um, this material is not done, but I do believe I have 100% code coverage. And that's one of the benefits of test-driven development is you never write code that you test for. And so you always have 100% code coverage um, because if you... Oh, like you should be really focused on only writing the tests that are necessary for the code that you're you're implementing or the uh sorry only write the code that are necessary for the tests that you're, you've implemented so yeah that's that's the idea around test driven development the other um cool thing is with react testing library <clears throat> um here, let me just show you really quick if we go to um cypre or actually React testing library course. This is the course material. So you're watching uh, the live stream. You get the benefit of seeing the course material. Um, uh, hold on a second. There we go. I think this is right, right? Oh, that's right, test. There we go. I was like, this doesn't look like as many as there should be. Uh, sorry about that. So, um, so you can actually before you even create um, our like editor. So we're we're making a post editor where it has a title, content, and tags. So before you even create that file, you can write this test, and the first fail failure you're going to get is hey this file doesn't exist. Then you create the file. Uh, then the next failure you're going to get is hey you're rendering undefined. Okay, now we create a uh, function component that is exported. And then the next error you're going to get is, hey, there's no uh, label uh, or there's no input or form control with the label title. You say, okay, now we're going to make that. Um, and so like by writing out this simple test, it kind of shows you the steps um, of what to implement next. Uh, I have a couple interviews on um, for the people who have pro access um, where we talk about test-driven development as a mechanism for um, keeping you focused as you're developing your software. So uh, times where test-driven development don't work as well, because uh, I, I told you I was going to talk about that too. Um, I, I think it's when things are a little ambiguous. Um, a long time I thought like UI, you just can't do TDD. Um, but that's why I included this. Um, let's see, how many of these are there? Um, yeah, eight lessons about um, TDD, uh, j uh, doing test room development for this post editor thing. The reason I created uh, that is because when I created React Testing Library, I realized that um, it actually now is possible and r really actually reasonable to test drive UI. So long as you know what the, like generally how the user is going to interact with the thing that you're building, which you probably should. If you don't know how the user is going to interact with the thing that you're building, then Go back to product and say, "Hey, how's the user going to interact with this thing?" Um, and if you're, uh, I, I've done this in the past. This is a great idea. Have product come sit with you, and you write out. Uh, you don't have to write the contents of the test, but write out at least the titles. Um, and that is awesome. That's a super, super great way to um, uh, to verify that you're building the right thing, uh, and also to to get some uh, good test-driven development going on. It's really cool. So. Um, yeah, anyway, the, yeah, that process of, um, uh, like, 
because React Testing Library is so detached from implementation details, it makes it possible for you to test drive things. Uh, if you're uh, one of the benefits of test driving as well is like actually people complain about the fact that um, like I don't know what I'm, how I'm going to build this thing. Uh, so how can I test drive something that I don't know how it's going to be built? And you say, well, I mean, you shouldn't be testing the how anyway. You should just be testing the what. What does it do? Uh, what are the use cases it supports? Um, and you should know those ahead of time. If you don't, like I said, go get requirements. Um, but uh, yeah, anyway, um, hopefully that that's sort of helpful. It gives you an idea. Uh, another thing is if the particular thing that you're developing um, has a lot of points of communication and, and you're going to end up mocking a ton of things, that might be a little bit tough to test drive. Um, uh, maybe not, but like um, if it is kind of a, a sprawling thing, um, like, um, yeah, like something that um, will impact the entire code base, but it's not really a library. I'm, I'm struggling to come up with a, a real good example of this, but um, yeah, just forget what I was saying. I can't come up with a good example of that, but um, lots of the, what I recommend people do is uh, give test driven development a try, like just experiment with it and, and give it a solid try for pretty much everything for a week or two. Um, test drive everything and you'll pretty quickly identify areas. Well, at, at first you're going to be like, well, hey, this is like really hard um, to, to test drive this stuff because you're inexperienced with it. And then as you gain experience, you'll start to notice places where it works pretty well and uh, places where it doesn't. You'll develop that intuition. Um, yeah, so let me go ahead and I'm going to jump in and answer questions on the live stream really quick. Um, pop this up. Pop out chat. Okay. Hey, Kent, waiting. Yeah, I started. Hooray. Hi, very true. The first three modules of the course. Yeah, thanks, George. Got a question. In the React section, will you be showing uh, what is the best way to set up flow with React? Um, no, I actually, so I, I, made, I made a decision with the course. I decided that I wanted to show you how to set up ESLint and flow and uh, prettier. <coughs> um, and ESLint and prettier are two things that are not intrusive on the code itself. But Flow is pretty intrusive on the code. And I wanted to make this accessible to people. So even if they just, they're they not experienced with Flow, or if they haven't, uh, or if they're using TypeScript or something, um, I, I didn't want uh, Flow to become a barrier to them learning testing. Um, and so yeah, you can you can make your own decision on whether that was a, a good choice on my part. But um, I, I feel like that was, uh, that was the way to go on the course. So no, um, I, I show you, there's a whole module about setting up stuff, which George, you've already seen, of course, um, uh, about setting up these static tools. But then through the rest of the course, you don't, you, you see me uh, like muck with ESLint config a little bit for a couple things, but you don't see me do anything with Flow. Um, I don't have Flow installed on any of that stuff. Uh, okay, Nozzle is 100% in for a pro subscription. Thanks, Tanner. Um, be the last testing course we give our devs forever. It might be. Um, yeah. <laughs> Unless you switch over to another language other than JavaScript. Uh, thank you, Sagar. I'm not, I'm sorry, I'm not sure how to pronounce your name. Please make it larger. Only 720p is available. Zoom, please. Oh, sorry, were you referring to this? Boop. Okay, I'll zoom in and you can, okay, woo. Pause when you're interested in what the code is doing, if you want to, and, and, bop. okay, there you go, sorry about that, um, hey Kent, more focus on Cypress or testing UI via Jest, um, so the, the course, um, is mostly, uh, focused on Jest, but there is a fair amount of, material about Cypress itself. Um, so yeah, we've got 18 uh, lessons about configuring, installing, and, and scripting, and writing Cypress tests. Um, it's about an hour of um, really dense material. Uh, Jest has an entire uh, module about configuring Jest. Um, this is because Cypress is actually a lot easier to configure. Um, and uh, yeah, so that, that's, that's pretty much the, the biggest thing. Um, and then Jest also 
Um, we do a lot more unit and integration type testing uh, with Jest. And then we also do this whole thing with DOM testing library in Jest. And that actually reflects my uh, real world experience. I spend a lot more time with Jest than I do with Cypress. Um, so not to suggest that one is necessarily better than the other, just that um, they are covering different use cases where, oh, where'd my trophy go? Where uh, Jest will cover integration and unit, um, and then Cypress just covers the top here with the end-to-end. -end. Okay. Um, binged it. Like, like you went to bing.com and, and found it that way? Cool. Um, okay, had been doing TDD for a year along with pair programming. I have to say I really miss that. Yeah, it's pretty great. Once you get that into the flow, this is one of the things. So like people say, oh, I don't have enough time for testing. Well, in actuality, you don't have enough time not to test because especially when you get TDD in your blood, you're like, oh, wow, I'm much more productive. So give that a look. Uh, what's your view on mocking HTTP requests with Jest? What's my view? I view it as a great idea. Um, let me show you in the module right here, mock. Mock HTTP requests with Jest mock in React components. Uh, I also show you how to do it with this fancy dependency injection thing I learned from Ryan Florence. So uh, yeah, um, for integration, uh, UI integration tests, I always mock HTTP requests. So yep, that's how I feel about it. Um, when you're writing features, the material is amazing, just confused about the balance. Um, sorry, let's see. Oh, yeah. Um, I, yeah, I generally focus, uh, spend most of my time in jest, like I said. Um, the, yeah, hopefully that answered your question. This async nature of this thing is kind of funny. Okay, thanks for like, oh, thank you. Um, TDD testing have been really helpful, that's great. I'm gonna see someone teaching this in the front end world. Yeah, it's, um, it's not been taught much in the front end world because it's always been, uh, most of the tools have been very like implementation detail focused, like, um, you test implementation details and it's really, really hard. Like, I don't know what I'm going to name that state. I, I could call it is open or I could just simply call it open. I don't know what I want to call it. It, 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 it. I'll find out when I implement it. And so like there's no, it makes no sense to test drive that when you don't know the implementation. But if you have tools that um, allow you to not test implementation details, then poof, you can um, start um, test driving that. Does Jest content only apply to testing React? No, no, it doesn't. So here, the DOM testing library tests any JS framework. We do a whole bunch of other um, tools and frameworks. Um, so yeah, uh, and that's all using Jest. And you can see the source code for how we configure Jest to make it work with these other frameworks. Um, just a general note, all content is 50% on your monitor and on 720p. It's barely readable. Ah. Bummer. 50%, what's that mean? Is that better? Okay, sorry. Uh, testing my chat. Uh, one I posted is not visible on your screen. Weird, that is weird. There's a bit of a lag, but appreciate the answers. All right, I'm out. This was fun. Um, so tomorrow is the, the last day, not the last day of the sale, but it's my last live stream. Um, and if you go to kcd.im slash dev tips, you'll see I'm out, boat, sail away, goodbye. Um, I actually, through weird scheduling uh, things, I am going with my family to um, on a boat and it's gonna be fun. Um, so you can check that, that out. I'll, I'll, I'll uh, do a little bit more talking about the course and, and uh, answering questions and things and then I'm gonna radio silence. That's why Egghead is handling all the support and stuff. So I'm not, I'm not abandoning you. I'm giving you in the good capable hands of Egghead. And when I get back, I'll look at all the millions of emails that I have in my inbox. Okay. This was fun. I will see you all later. Um, and hope you have a great day. Bye.